This adult directs patient reports that his tics began at six years of age and that he has obsessive compulsive disorder, vocal and physical tics. His MRI says the left anterior disc displacement with reduction. Left condyle has a round extension on the superior surface. This is usually a chondroma. Three tongue blades in the mandible positioned edge to edge decreases urges by 30%. We know that if we make him an appliance, the height of which is three tongue blades, uh, we have a good chance of success. When we made him an appliance, his ticks were 80% eliminated within 24 hours. The TMJ symptoms he reported are typical TMJ symptoms we find in most of these patients with movement disorders. Bilateral frontal, temporal, and parietal headaches. Bilateral retroorbital pain. Vertigo and lightheadedness. Bilateral otalgia. Bilateral tinnitus. Left face pain. Bilateral maxillary sinus pain. Left TMJ crepitus. Right TMJ popping on opening and protrusion. Cervical spine crepitus and neck pain. Bilateral shoulder pain. This is this patient's MRI in the closed mouth position on the right side. Notice the right condyle, how nice and round and smooth it is. And that the lamina dura goes all the way around it. And the disc is interposed between the condyle and the eminence. This is an additional view of the same right TM joint. When looking at these MRIs, it is always beneficial to compare one side with the other to get an overall impression of symmetry between the two condyles. This is the condyle of the left temporal mandibular joint in centric occlusion. Notice this upward extension. This is going to affect the functioning of this joint. Notice that it is round and not pointed like previous ones that you have seen. The previous ones are made out of bone and are called osteophytes. When they are round like this, they are made out of cartilage and are called chondromas. This is another view of the left TM joint, chondroma, on the superior surface of the left condyle. In a more lateral slice through the temporal mandibular joint, notice that the back of the condyle is flattened. You can tell that this image is more lateral than the previous ones because the muscle fibers are running vertically up and down. This is a temporalis muscle. In this condyle on the left side where the chondroma is, you can see this is a medial view because the fibers run horizontal. You can see by the horizontal orientation of the muscle fibers that this is the lateral pterachoid muscle. So it is a more medial view than the views with the muscle fibers running vertically. This is a view through the patient's left temporal mandibular joint and it appears that there is disc material located laterally to the condyle as well as medially to the condyle. You can surmise that this could only happen if there was a large perforation in the disc and the condyle was poking through the disc with the remnants of the condyle displaced to either side of the condyle. This is a wide open MRI image through the right temporal mandibular joints showing that the condyle travels past the eminence and is in place between the two bones. It looks like there may be the appearance of a little cratering of the eminence right here. This is a wide open view of the left temporal mandibular joint showing the condyle with its chondroma does travel past the eminence and the disc is interposed in between the two bones. This is the young man that you saw yesterday. We've delivered his appliance about five minutes ago and already he says his urges are about 40% less. We're going to see him again tomorrow is it in the morning? Uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, and we'll check and rebalance the appliance and do any fine tuning that's necessary after he's worn it for about 24 hours.
This gentleman has now had his appliance a total of 24 hours. And you can see that his uh, movements and his vocal tics are greatly decreased. In fact, his wife estimates they're approximately 80% decreased uh, in the 24 hours that we've had the appliance in. And he will address the audience now and uh, give you some more information. Okay. Just tell them oh. how you feel. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, my wife says like 80%, and to me, to me, like I, the biggest impression that I have is that like I have a little more control over my urges. Like before, once the urges coming, I basically can't really control, so I just have to do it. So, but then now I have a little more control, and I believe that I've been having this stress syndrome like more than 20 years. So, it's been quite some time. So I expect that as I get used to our, to this appliance, it will I, I will be improving more about that. And my previous experience about how they approach to to heal or to cure my stress syndrome was, I I've done basically everything. If you you name it, I've been, I've done everything: medication, behavioral therapy, and all kinds of tests. I've done everything. Like, and I I was hospitalized in the mental hospital for 18 days and everything but then those medications were like side effect of those psychotic medications were like killing me I would rather have like uh, that threat syndrome than like being not myself but because of side effect of that they caused so I was really impressed with this fairly uh, quite safe treatment and it is showing some improvement or some effect on me after 24 hours. So, yeah, I was quite impressed with this and I expect some more improvement continuously. And I thank Dr. Stack about it. <laughs> this is this gentleman's wife and she wants to say something to the viewing audience. Well, the first time he's had the appliance, I saw a lot, a great difference. He would be, it was the very first time we went out for shopping and he didn't really have a lot of vocal tics, a lot of modern tics. He usually have like a lot of it. But yesterday, it was like every, I would say like every half an hour he would have it and it's a lot improvement. He would usually have it like in a minute he would have his tics like five times in in one minute, but yesterday it was just like every half an hour to every four minutes. Then you were counting that. I was. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I'm very hopeful for this appliance. Even when j we're just together, um, it's it has shown a lot of difference, and it. I'm pretty sure it's making him more comfortable and lesser, like less tired and stuff. And I'm very help. I'm very hopeful that this appliance would really work. Last the last doctor we met. The neurologist told me, you know what, this disease doesn't kill you. Why don't you adjust a little bit, Le learn how to live <laughs> with it. <laughs> and then I was, yeah. no. Well, he, he, he's uh, insane. <laughs> how was your last night's sleep? Did you sleep better or? Yeah, I slept, I slept good. Honestly speaking, this is causing me so much discomfort right now. So my first thing that I need to do is that I need to get used to this so uh, I, I find it a little hard to eat and uh, sleeping and stuff like that but anyway that's all minor thing my my priority is to get my body or stress syndrome improve right. the symptoms improve so I'm ready to get adjusted with this discomfort and uh, well they said like it'll take few days so I don't think it's too bad yeah I slept good this patient returns after seven weeks of wearing his lower repositioning appliance. Zero in on his mouth. Okay. 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 This is the position in which we have it today. We have resurfaced it to make it a little bit taller, approximately one to one and a half millimeters taller to compensate for the wear uh, that he had done in the past seven weeks. You can see the difference in his symptomology between then and now. Okay, relax. You can relax. Put your lips together. Mm -hmm. 